okay thanks for the invitation and uh, i think let me a disclaimer i'm not an expert that's why it's a tutorial talk others would have given a more expert level talk yeah uh, so just a show of hands how familiar are people with deep uh, kind of reinforcement learning here does the well a markov decision process does anyone know what's a policy gradient so i'll kind of try to tune it to that level i think i'll try to keep it fairly basic yeah this uh, since is going to be a weekend morning i didn't want to go too much into the details but it's still going to be a bit fairly math heavy yeah so just bear with me so the at least the title is split it into two parts so what's called reinforcement learning and then there is something called say deep reinforcement learning so the first half of the talk around 20 minutes will be just getting the notation of the deep reinforcement learning and then towards the end we will kind of shift gears towards the deep reinforcement learning and uh, mainly we'll focus on one algorithm which is called as a policy gradient and we'll try to derive that right so i don't plan this tutorial to be fully exhaustive so this is just to give you some pointers to get started from where you can read up further yeah so essentially the motivation for deep reinforcement comes from this fact right as humans we kind of learn by interacting with the environment think of an infant trying to walk or you are trying to learn to balance the bicycle yeah so no one explicitly going to teach you give an examples of that okay you are sitting in the right position so you get a label 1 you are sitting in the wrong position you get a label 0 etc right so you essentially you go deep dive into the environment for example you try to walk you fall down or you then you kind of get hurt that's your reward minus 1 or you kind of get up and some suddenly you know that you try to figure out the balance so you get reward of plus 1 and then you kind of slowly you get a sense of what it means to walk or what it means to ride a bike by just trying out things right so that's essentially way humans are learning no one giving you there's no explicit teacher as such saying okay this is 10 10 10 in a conventional machine learning framework yeah and that's essentially going to be the motivation for reinforcement learning and so Uh, the couple of things here right as humans we are acutely aware of how our environment responds to what we do right that's the key thing here right we are acting in an environment we do something and we kind of get feedback right so we know what the how the environment is responding to the actions we take and second part is the most important part right we seek to influence what happens through our behavior right once you get the reward i kind of now control how i should do my actions so that i can get my rewards better so essentially a reinforcement learning is just a computational approach to kind of formalize this notion of learning yeah and this is what we call as learning from interaction yes yeah? so in contrast with we have this supervised learning where you're learning from labels there is unsupervised learning no labels so it's kind of the way to think is that this is a way of uh, learning from interaction with the environment yeah so the technically a reinforcement learning agent learns from interaction with the environment to achieve a desired goal yeah in summary this statement essentially i think the rest of the slides are just going to be how do i mathematically concretize this this one statement right what is the mathematical formalism for just to make sure how do you kind of model this statement learn from interaction with environment to achieve a desired goal so there are kind of i mean i want to go into lot of applications there are quite a lot of applications like for example where this motivation is coming from but i started with the way the humans learn as a motivation but that's what not we're interested in we're actually interested in lot of various problems right for the classical example is learning to play games control systems in robotics or even recommender systems right can be cast in the deep re in a reinforcement learning framework or even trading or at a very high level even some standard supervised learning problems kind of if your problem with a certain non differentiable loss functions can also be cast as a reinforcement learning problem yeah so it's kind of a it's a very new paradigm i mean it's not a new paradigm but it's a very powerful paradigm if you somehow make it work you know because almost any problem you can think of i mean you can cast it in a reinforcement learning problem and that's what i want to get to you today right i'll give you the basic formalism and you can think of your own setup whatever problem you have how do you formulate it that and then there are lot certain standard algorithms which you can chunk uh, to crank the machinery So I'll just briefly flash a couple of examples before we get into the details, right? So this was in 2013, I guess, where DeepMind showed that you can actually learn to play Atari games 
just from raw pixel values, right? And so uh, the examples I'm showing are some kind of success stories in deep reinforcement learning rather than reinforcement learning. Yeah. So reinforcement learning has been there for quite a long time, and uh, but it was not successful mainly because of this. Till deep learning came in because of this infinite state space, it had a lot of computational issues. But after a couple of these, since 2012, 13, there has been kind of a tremendous progress in deep reinforcement learning. Yeah. So probably. I think just let me just make a comment. I think these are the two talks, the way I've arranged, I think these are probably currently the most hot areas in deep learning. So one is the deep reinforcement learning and after this the second talk which would be the GANs, right? Probably that's why I think you can see probably if these are almost on the cutting edge of the currently the deep learning setup, yeah? So that at least, yeah, so the what I, in this what I want to point out is that to learn this all you need is just the pixel value, right, of the Atari game and they were able to figure out how to play the game, yeah? Then the Google's AlphaGo, which defeated the Go, was essential another in, I think this was in 2017, right? This was again purely based on kind of the deep reinforcement learning framework. Then, so there are other examples, lot of examples in robotics, right? How do you make a creature jump in a terrain? How do you try to control it? Those are kind of lot of examples coming up in robotics. And this is an example in Berkeley, there is something called as a preschool for robots, right? Essentially, the way humans, like kids go to preschool, you can have like robots go to preschool where they just keep trying learning things. And essentially the whole loop, the closed form loop is a reinforcement learning loop where they keep trying, how do I lift here and keep it there? How do I grasp something, yeah? And essentially they're just sitting and trying and doing that for three days together. That's essentially, but we'll come to the formalism later, but that's one example to think of, yeah? So, we, I'll also give you one example in a recommended system and this is exactly also what I'm trying to this is some work going on in our labs which I'm trying to cast even a recommend, recommended system as a deep reinforcement learning problem. Say for example, you say I'm looking to buy some dresses, you get some items in the catalog, then you say the user actually clicks on a blue dress, then it shows some blue dresses, then again the user converts and say show me only sleeveless, then again it picks up sleeveless dresses, etc. Yeah. So this is the way you again see that you're interacting with a catalog, you're making some actions, the system is showing you some results and you're getting a reward in the end. What is the reward? Someone adds that item to your uh, cart, right? Again, how do you formulate? We'll come to that. But again, this sort of simple multimodal conversation system or learning your recommendations can itself also be cast as a deep reinforcement learning problem. So I also point out to this thing side called as open AI gym, which is essentially a lot of this examples which I'll talk about are coming from there, which is essentially a series of uh, video games. You think of it as more of an test bed to test your deep reinforcement learning algorithm, right? So you'll get an example of some game where there is some AI agent which is one side and you are uh, trying to your reinforcement learning algorithm to kind of win the game, yeah? So there are a lot of games in that. So this is Okay, so that's the introduction. Now I think we want to do a deep dive into the deep reinforcement learning framework, yeah? So I'll again come back to the formalism, which is an agent learning from interaction with the environment to achieve a goal, yeah? And this is what we want to formalize. What is an agent? What is an environment? What do you mean by an interaction? And what is a goal? And how do you achieve that? So as I said earlier, so this kind of, there is this whole concept of supervised learning where you're given explicit labeled examples to learn, then this unsupervised learning, and what we're talking about, the third paradigm, which is called the reinforcement learning, where in a lot of examples, it's often impractical to obtain labeled examples which cover all possible scenarios. That's why it's a very natural way to kind of formulate problems in the reinforcement learning setup. Yeah. So before we even understand deep learning, we need to we need to speak the jargon of deep learning, right? If there are, I mean, if you if you think these are all very familiar, then please raise your hands, then I won't cover. But this is exactly what we're trying to cover, right? What is an agent, environment, state, action, reward, policy, return, value function, model, right? These things, any problem you think of, if you can actually map your things to these things, then you know how to cast a problem in RL framework, yeah? So, so we'll just go one by one, and that's essentially the main thing, yeah? So my references for these are two things where I prepared the talk. So one is this uh, Richard Sutton's book on reinforcement learning. There is a new edition. I think the, the, the book is pretty old now. So he's writing a second edition of the book that is freely available online. And uh, the, if you want to go deep, chapter one, two, one, two, three are the things where you'll get a good sense of reinforcement learning, right? But after one, two, three, you can actually stop. After that, it's all classical reinforcement learning. 
then you probably deep reinforcement learning hardly there are not many textbooks out there yet, but kind of the example I am taking is from this but Karpati's blog on the deep reinforcement learning that is the working example I am using to explain some of the concepts. Ok, so let us dig deep now here. Yeah. So, so essentially we are trying to formulate this agent environment interaction. So, again we will reiterate the same thing. So, an RL agent must be able to do three things. It must be able to sense the state of the environment, yeah. It must be able to take actions that affect the state and the third one the agent must also have a goal relating to the state of the environment, yeah. So, this is the diagram I think probably try to memorize right. This is what we will have to keep using back and forth again, yeah. So, there is three things here. So, the agent and the environment, yeah. So, the agent is the learner and the decision maker is called the agent, you can have an example ok. And the environment is the thing it interacts with is called the environment. So, an agent is someone you are trying to learn right, an RL agent, some trying to make the action. Environment is something which is completely outside the agent yeah? that is how you think of the environment. So, the boundaries are all depend upon the problem, it does not necessarily mean that the environment and agent can also be the same person or it can be the same robot. So, essentially where you the market I have to take an action, whatever is you outside the agent is environment, yeah. So, the agent actually takes an action, yeah. The agent selects an action to perform, yeah. It could be here that I am trying to get up or trying to walk, right. That is an action. So, the environment actually gives out a reward for the action, right. You take some action and you get a reward out. And the state is essentially once you get that reward, the state gets modified. So, I will come we will again reiterate these three things, but things you need to remember are action, reward and state. So, the agent takes an action, the environment gives you a reward based on that the state changes, then again the agent takes the next action and this is a control loop or this is a closed form loop that keeps continuing, yeah. That is the basic formalism of an RL form. So, we are going to use this example throughout, yeah. So, this is what is called as the one of the games in the open gym is called the pong game, yeah. So, let us spend some time on what is that we are trying to do here, yeah. There is a video here, but it does not work, but so let me just directly go to this part, yeah. So, so this is uh, think of this as a classical ping pong, right, whatever your table tennis. So, what you see that there are two paddles here, let me see if I can, yeah. So, this is one paddle here, that is another paddle, these are two ping pong parts, yeah. So, this paddle is controlled by an AI agent that is essentially the game who is controlling it, yeah. And this is you, you are playing this paddle, yeah. So, your goal is essentially you can move the paddle up, down, etc. And there is the ball here, yeah. So, you essentially take this paddle, hit the ball and it goes up here and then this guy hits back and that is how you play the game. You are essentially playing a ping pong on this grid of say 200 cross 100 uh, pixels, yeah. And every time say you, you hit this ball let us say the AI agent or the other the play the game cannot intercept it and it goes out of the boundary then you win, yeah. So, you if kind of the other or if you essentially this guy hits it and it goes out and you cannot intercept it then you lose, yeah. So, if you hit once you get a reward of 1 or think of you lose you get a reward of 0. So, essentially there is a counter here which says how many wins you get, right and that is how the game proceeds. So, you essentially Classically it is just a TT game, table tennis game right, you are just passing the balls anyone. And the only th what the goal here is that I need to figure out how should I hit, yeah. So, the green guy what you see right, that is the RL agent. So, I am going to play this game for many times, many many 200,000 times and figure out how to game play this game perfectly right, without any supervision, yeah. No one is going to tell me how to play the game right. You have the game engine which is you are playing with, think you think that you are going to play with an opponent, yeah and somehow you are going to play around and then figure out how I am going to win, yeah. So, that is the setup. So, that setup is pretty clear, right. So, let me show some of that, ok. So, the agent plays one of the paddles and the other paddle is controlled by the game and your goal is actually to learn how to play the game, yeah. So, that is the reinforcement learning framework. Let me just briefly mention one point that uh, if you want to learn this, right, the AI engine which is the orange one, it cannot be a perfect engine, right. If it is a perfect engine, that means that you are never going to win and you are never going to get any feedback on what kind of actions do I need to make to win. So, typically generally this game system is also a imperfect AI system, right. It's so, you are actually you have some chance of winning, but you are going to play around to figure out how to win and lose. 
So you're going to start playing, you're going to win some, you're going to lose some, and eventually you want to learn a policy or a strategy, how I'm going to win against the opponent, yeah? If the opponent is perfect, there's nothing, I mean, you'll probably, you won't even get a chance to learn anything, yeah? Unless he explicitly teaches you. Okay, so, so in this context, okay, so I'll tell, coming again, what is the agent? Agent is the green paddle, yeah? What is the environment? Everything other than the green paddle. So the entire array of the whole game, that is your environment. What is your action? I can take either the paddle up or down, right? Essentially, I'm moving paddle up and down to intercept the ball. That's why that is the action. So what is the reward? Either I win the game, I lose the game, or nothing happens because I get, is just in some state of the game. And what is the next state? State is essentially the whole image, right? So you, you get the ball at green, you give one smash, it goes around, and then you get some reward, and after that the state changes, which is essentially the new position of the ball, yeah? So that's how you abstract this problem in this set. So now we'll start introducing a little bit more notation, yeah? So we call the action as an AT, yeah? We call the state ST, and a reward RT. And a game essentially is a sequence of this, right? You start with state S0, you get an action A0, you get a reward R1, state changes to S1, you take an action A1, you get a reward R2, you keep continuing till you hit a terminal state. And what is the terminal state? You either win or you lose. At that point you stop, the game restarts, you continue. Yeah? That's essentially how you are playing the game. And this is a mathematical abstraction to that uh, game play. So again, I'll re a little bit more. So the agent receives a representation of the environment which we call the state ST, yeah? And the state S belongs to this capital S which is the set of all possible states, yeah? On the basis of ST, the agent selects an action AT which is also belongs to some space, yeah? One time step later as a result of the action, the agent receives a scalar reward RT plus one, yeah? Again, so this is a little bit, if you look at the literature, there is some confusion between RT and RT plus 1, but I prefer this notation where you get ST, you make an action AT, after one time step, you get a reward RT plus 1, and then the state of the system changes to ST plus 1, yeah? So that's the closed form loop, yeah? So little bit on how we want to do is actions, again to generalize this, actions can be any decisions you want to learn to make, right? So any time you think about problem, you need to think what is the action, right? What is my action? Here the action is very simple. I move the paddle up, I move the paddle down. But, okay. And state, what is state? State can be abstracted by anything you think the action has to be influenced by. It does not have to be a perfect everything, right? It can be a simple thing, what P set of features you think will be responsible for the action, right? It's all the game of how you model your state, yeah? And in the end, the agent's goal is actually to maximize the total amount of reward it receives over the long run, yeah? But I won't formalize this statement yet, that's what we'll do in the next couple of slides. So again, we'll come to this uh, Pong example, right? So what is state? Now more precisely, state is nothing but this 210 cross 160 cross 3 RGB image. Yeah? So again, this is how we'll be, where each pixel in the image is some number between 0 to 255. So think as this roughly 100,800 numbers is your state, yeah? which is what you want to do. Yeah? Your state is a vector of 100,000 dimensions which is I just flattened this uh, egg, uh, 200 cross, 210 cross 160 cross 3 image into a long vector, yeah. What is action? Action is either binary, up or down, right? There are only two possible states. And what is the reward? Reward can be three things. Plus one, if the ball went past the opponent. Minus one, if we missed the ball. And zero otherwise, zero. Most of the time you're playing it to be zero, right? Because nothing is happening. But only at certain points you either win or lose. And that's when you get the reward, right? And the whole point is to figure out how do I get this plus ones a lot. Yeah? That's essentially. So your goal is essentially to move the decide how should I move the paddle up and down based on what I see in the image so that I get lots and lots of reward. Yeah? So before I move into something, I'll just briefly something uh, uh, formalism called. So you probably have heard the term Markov decision process. And a Markov decision process or a MDP is another RL task with a certain special property called the Markov property, yeah? So what does it say? Yeah? So this is essentially a way of kind of simplifying our state dynamics. So what does that mean? That I take some action, I get a reward, my state changes, right? Something happens to the state, which is essentially what I'm showing you here, right? 
So ST plus 1 is a new state, RT plus 1 is a new reward. In principle, this change can depend upon the entire history, right? You can go all the way back to your game or whatever, everything it can depend, right? So Markov assumption states that it depends only on two things, right? Which is essentially your previous history, which is ST and AT, the last state, yeah. So the one example which I always, I find it very interesting to think is think of playing the game of chess, right? So it's, chess is again a classic, you can formulate in RL framework, but any time you want to make the next state, so you, all that you can do is depends upon the current state of the board, right? You don't have to know how you came to that board, right? It really does not matter whether you took an action from there, you took, there are multiple ways of coming to that state. But once you are in that state, that's all it matters. Based on that, I can figure out what should be the next action and reward I should take, yeah? That's essentially the Markov property, yeah? And I think every, most of the problems you see kind of uh, implicitly assume this is the Markov assumption, yeah? Even though the Markov assumption may not be true, it definitely it makes sense to actually. Okay. <laughs> actually, formulate this as the Markov decision process. Yeah. Okay, so now coming to the, we need to speak the basic RL vocab. So we know what is an agent, we know what is an environment. Agent is the paddle, environment is your entire grid. State is actually the pixel values. Action is move the paddle up and down. Reward is plus one, zero, minus one. Yeah. That's the reward you get. So now we come to the other four things which are policy, return, value function and model, yeah. So once I get these four things, I think you'll have a clean understanding of what is the reinforcement learning problem, yeah. Okay. So we now come to something called as a policy. So at a high level, policy is something, what is the action you want to take, yeah. That's it. I mean, abstractly, what is it? I want to decide whether I want to move the paddle up or paddle down. but uh, at each step, the agent has to implement a mapping from state to an action, right? Given a state, that is the pixel, given this current, uh, how the current state of the game is, I want to decide what should be the action I need to take, either should I move up or not. That formalism, the way of mathematically writing that is called a policy, which is what we use the notation Y of A given X. Given that I am in state S, what is the probability that I will take an action A? Yeah? Given that this image, what is the probability that I will move up? or what is the probability that I will move down, yeah. So most of the deep reinforcement learning will use this notion of something called a stochastic policy, right, which is essentially you, rather than taking a deterministic policy, whether I can move up or down, all this compute is some kind of what is the probability that I should move up, what is the probability that I should move down, and you start sampling for it, right. So if you say probability of moving up is 0 0.9, moving down is 0 0.1, you actually toss a biased point is probability point 0.1. If it is head, you take that action, otherwise you go, right? And it's very, it's actually looks very simple, but there's a very strong reason why you want to use stochastic policies because you want to ex encourage a lot of exploration. So if you don't use stochastic policy, you're always taking the best action. You're not encouraging too much of exploration. So in, you want to take the best action most of the time, but sometimes you also want to take other actions so that you can figure out some other possible ways of winning the game, yeah? That's why the whole notion of a stochastic policy becomes important. So that's the probabilistic formulation. Okay, so in this, what is it, right? So in this game of Pong, it's quite simple. It's the probability of moving the paddle up or down, right? Which is probability that the paddle is up or the probability that y is equal to 1, yeah? Given the current image, which is this 210 cross 160 cross 3 image. So essentially, I'm trying to learn a function from this 100,000 numbers to a probability which says whether I should be up or down, yeah? that's all there is to what is the policy. So we figured out now what is the policy, yeah? but now comes to the question, okay, I know what is the RL framework, I know what it means to be, what's the policy, now how do I learn this policy, right, so what, what is the formalism you can give me or what is the mathematical machinery you can give me to learn the policy, and for that we need to bring the concept of a return, yeah, can you see, I can't see the time there, I just want to make sure I'm right on time. Oh, so this is a bit frozen here. Okay. So the agent's goal actually, so the, there are three things, right? Goals, rewards and returns. Yeah. So this is what we'll walk through. Yeah. So again, at a high level, the agent's goal is to maximize the total amount of cumulative return reward it receives over the long run. So you saw that earlier, uh, every time you take a action, you get a reward, right? But what we don't want to do is we don't want to maximize our, our, we don't want to decide our policy to maximize our rewards because they are almost uh, instantaneous rewards. They are like 
they are not long sighted right what you want to do is you want to revoke, maximize the probability that eventually you are going to win right. So, that is what and uh, what we call it we need to formalize this notion of what is actually a return. Return is the bunch of rewards you get over the long run and not just the immediate reward you want right because you are no one is you are just started with a f you are playing one or two games you get a small reward and you do not want to base on something. So, and that essentially comes to the most uh, crucial step of modeling RL framework is actually the way to think is that you have some goal right that is what I say goal. Goal is I want to win the game yeah and the only knob you have to make sure that you win the game is how you specify your rewards. So, the all the kind of the creativity comes in how do you specify your rewards so that eventually by maximizing this cumulative rewards I reach my goal right. If this rewards are ill specified or I mean if you are not specified in the right way it will try to only maximize that there is no goal in mind. The mapping from goal to rewards is what you will essentially have to play around with how do you do that. So, before I continue the uh, give them more notation I need to kind of define two kinds of tasks people talk about. One is called as the episodic tasks and the other is called as a continuing task. The example of Pong I gave is an episodic task. An episodic task has a natural notion of a terminal state that I start playing the game, I win or lose and I stop, boom I again restart. I start playing the game. So, every one trajectory of a game is called an episode and then you play multiple episodes of the game. As opposed to a continuing state there is no natural kind of time stop, you just keep on right the walking or I mean there is no way that you figure out walking or some robotic manipulation task. So, there are other tasks, but we will not talk too much about the continuing task. I think for this uh, tutorial we will be mainly focusing on an episodic task yeah. And this is how an episodic task would be for the Pong game right. So, you have this state is just an image right and each time you take an action either you go up or down, up, down, 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 up, up, up and eventually boom you either win or lose yeah. So, when you win that is one episode. So, what I shown you are four different episodes of the game right. You start playing the game, you take some actions, you win. Then again start playing the game, you take an action then you lose. So, you will keep repeating these are called episodes of the game. Yeah. So, now we will define this notion of what is a return for an episodic task. So, for that what you have is this notion of time steps right. At any time t you took an action a t then you got a reward a t plus 1 and from that you start continued playing the game yeah. and then you got the series of reward which is r t plus 1, r t plus 2, r t plus 3 till you hit the terminal state. And return is nothing but just a function of these sequence of rewards yeah that is it. And it can be technically it can be any function, but the most commonly used the function is just the sum which is essentially a sum of these rewards right. So, in our Pong example it will either be 1 or minus 1 because you start off 0 0 0 0 win 0 0 0 minus 1 right. But in general for a lot of applications the rewards can be very different it does not have to be like 0 1 rewards when actually have the rewards and so, technically a reward is just a sum of these things. So, you get this reward of plus 1, minus 1, minus 1, plus 1 so this fine this is the whole sum. So, for continuous task we introduce some other notion of called as a discounted return yeah which is essentially this it is very simple problem because if you have a continuous task if you add up all the rewards it goes to infinity that is not tractable right. So, you introduce something called as a discounting factor called gamma yeah which is essentially r t plus 1 plus gamma r t plus 2 plus gamma square r t plus 2 yeah. So, you can think of gamma is some number between 0 or 1 where you downweight the future rewards yeah and that is called as the discount rate. So, the discount return actually is the way say that it is the present value of your future rewards right and how much are you going to give importance to the reward which you will get in the future as opposed to valuing your current reward. So, as gamma approaches 1 the agent becomes more far sighted because it is want to take this in the long run as gamma comes to 0 it is a very myopic agent that is a very greedy it wants to do only maximize right now yeah and that has a factor of what kind of policies it will run right how you set the gamma. Okay, So, I talk this policy now and I called it return yeah. So, policy is how do I take the action and return is essentially a uh, what do you call a sum of the rewards you got over the one episode yeah that is what it is. Okay, so we're still not there, right? So, okay, so the reason is this, right? So, what I said is the agent's goal is to maximize the total amount of cumulative reward it receives over the long run. Yeah, this part of long run I didn't put, right? So, essentially, you can think of GT 
is again a random variable, right? Because the reward you are getting is for one play of the game, right? Anytime you come, you take an action, there is a stochastic policy, you can branch out, then there is another stochastic policy, you branch out. So, there will be multiple policies, right? So, the agent's goal is actually to choose the actions to maximize the expected discounted return. So, what we need to now do is actually take an expectation over these different episodes, right? So, there is one episode you start, you win, another episode you start lose, right? So, you run this game multiple times. At each time you get a kind of a either a reward of plus one or minus one and, that is, and then GT is just the sum of that rewards. Expectation you can think of just I do an empirical sum of this, right? What is the average return I get, yeah? And essentially that is the RL framework is to choose the actions to maximize the expected discounted return, right? So, we went from reward, we went to return, then you said discounted return, then you said expected discount return and that is what you want to maximize. And this expected discounted return is what is called in the literature as a value function. And that is what you are trying to maximize. Okay. And this is the most formal definition of what we call as a state value function, yeah? which is the value of a state S yes, under a stochastic policy pi is the expected return when starting in state S yes, and then follow continuing that policy thereafter. Yeah? So, you started state S yes, and then you play the game. I want to know what is that value of that. So that is the technical term for value technique, which is nothing but you start that you keep track of all the rewards you will get, but realize that this rewards are stochastic. So, you take an expectation of that yeah? and that is essentially the state value function, which is how much reward will I get from state yes under policy pi. There is something called an action value function, which I will skip. Yeah? This also I will skip. Yeah? So, for now this is all we need to know because I am kind of running down on time. So, you have this policy, then I said what is the return, which is the discounted return. Then I said expected discounted return is the value function and an RL agent will try to maximize that. I yeah? uh, will also skip this part okay, because we do not really need, we come, I need to come to the deep learning part soon. Yeah? So, there are uh, broadly there are three classes approaches to real framing which is called the value based reinforcement learning, policy based reinforcement learning and the model based RL. Yeah? So, now I know told you what is the value function. So, the value based approaches start trying to make learn this value function, yeah. Policy based RL actually is, takes a different paradigm, they directly try to estimate the policy without considering the value function and model based try to build a model of the environment. I think for now let us focus only on the policy based RL and that is actually, that is the one which is showing a lot of success and that is probably a little bit more hot right now, yeah. And uh, I covered till now essentially chapter 3 of this book, right. Now, you can go ahead and say all chapters 4 to 13 is what is called as the classical reinforcement learning, right. So, with the advance of deep reinforcement learning, I can probably safely skip all these chapters and directly come to something called as a policy gradient, right. That is what I am going to do. But if you are really, I mean, you think that you need to understand fully, please feel to read all this chapter 4 to 13, that will show you all these classical ways of solving the reinforcement learning problems, yeah. Now, we are just going to jump directly into deep reinforcement learning. With, with this motivation, I think it is pretty simple to see what is happening here, yeah. So, again I will recall a little bit of notation, right. So, so for me it is always this notation, I think that is why I keep putting this again and again, it is always have to be very clear about what are we talking about, right. So, that is a goal, that is a reward which is the RT, return is the cumulative discounted return over the long run, value function is the expected discount return, policy showed you how to take actions and the agent's goal is to find a policy to maximize the expected discounted return, yeah. So, deep reinforcement learning essentially is that, right. I told you there are three ways of doing it, value based RL, policy based RL and model based RL. So, why not use deep neural networks for to approximate the value function, use a deep neural network to approximate the policy function or use a deep neural network to model the environment, yeah. And those essentially are the different thing, right. So, the earlier successes that the Atari paper came from something called as the approximating the value function, that is technically called a deep Q network or the DQNs, yeah. I am going to skip DQNs for the for this entire tutorial and I am going to focus on something called as a PG which is the policy gradients, which directly try to optimize the policy, yeah. And there is another al algorithm called actor credit, yeah. So, if you want to go back and learn again, I think PG and AC are the things you will really want to focus on, yeah, because that is essentially where they are the much easier to understand and that is there where they are showing a lot of potential, yeah. So, we will focus on this algorithm called policy gradients. So, what I said, yeah. So, first notion we need to get is that I defined this policy, stochastic policy which said how do I take an action. So, now I need to start to parameterize this, yeah. So, I am going to say that this policy depends on some parameters theta, yeah. 
and how does it works in our place form? Pretty simple, right? You take your image, you in simplest case you could just pass it through another neural network or a deep neural network or it could even be a CNN, right? So, I took this kind of 210 cross 100 cross 3 image, passed it through a deep neural network, it could be a CNN or any neural network and the output I put a softmax layer which is either 1 or 0. 1 means I move the paddle up, 0 means I move the paddle down. That gives me a parameterized policy of moving my paddle either up or down. So, what is this modeling? Given any image ST, what is the probability that I take the action AT is up or down, right? That is essentially the policy network, yeah? And the whole goal is now try to learn the parameters of this policy network in the reinforcement learning paradigm we discussed earlier. So, the goal is to learn a parameterized policy that can select actions without consulting the value function, yeah? But technically note that a value function will still be used to learn the policy parameter but is not required for action selection as in the Q based other the value based uh, algorithms, yeah? So, it's familiar with that. So, again we will do the standard deep learning trick, right? So, I have a policy parameter theta which are the parameters of this CNN, yeah? And I want to maximize the performance measure for J of theta. As usual we will do stochastic gradient descent, the only thing is this is uh, what you are trying to maximize it. So, I will do a stochastic gradient ascent. So, theta t plus 1 is equal to theta t plus alpha into gradient of this thing, yeah? So, essentially the whole literature probably I can, you can write uh, 20, 20, 30 pages and how do you, what are the different ways of computing this gradient? That is all the policy gradient is about, yeah? Fine, yeah. So, I think, uh, so I think, so again now we will come back to the same, right? So, essentially we said we want to maximize the discounted return. So, we are going to, the performance measure would be that value function we are trying to maximize. So, given a start t, I am going to play the game and I am going to get out of rewards. How do you want to maximize it, yeah? So, the whole thing is how do I find the derivatives of that, right? And uh, this is a little bit, I am not sure because lack of time I will keep this, this probably is the most crucial part on how do you compute the derivative. There are two standard tricks people use, yeah. So, one is called as the log derivative trick and the other is called as the gradient of the episode, yeah. So, the log derivative trick actually takes the gradient of an expected value of a function of f of x, yeah. So, bear with this. So, this is gradient of expectation of f of x is nothing but expectation of f of x plus this term, yeah. This is the trick we will need to right? we will forget the derivation, but eventually this gives you a way to push the gradient inside the expectation, yeah. And that is very helpful because it helps us to do now the expectation via empirical averages. The second is actually we also need to compute the log probability of an episode. The way to think about is that I run the game, I get a bunch of states. So, I just want to see what is the likelihood of this trajectory, right? So, and that is where all the dynamics of the, the way you are defined come in, right? So, essentially here you say that what is the probability of the first state and then given this state I take an action AT, this is my probability that is the policy and then I take this action AT I am in state T, what is the probability that I move to ST plus 1. And this again I am invoking the MDP in the Markov property because it does not depend on anything else. So, this is all the trajectory and then I essentially bring the log in, I sum it up and take the derivative and all this it comes up to is that the derivative depends only on the policy. That is probably the beauty of this, essentially the state dynamics completely disappear. Once with policy gradient I really do not need to know what is the Markov property, what how the states are evolving etc. All I need is the gradient of my policy network, yeah. And probably that is the whole thing, this is essentially the final takeaway of this whole talk is this equation if you remember, right. Which is essentially the gradient of my value function with respect to the parameters theta of the policy is an expectation over the trajectories. When I say expectation think of that you are playing a game, you got one episodes and you play game thousand times you get thousand episodes, right. I am just going to sum that over thousand times, yeah, that is how I take the gradient. The interesting thing is these three parts, what are these parts? This is my total reward. So, I take play the game once, I got the reward of 1. I gave the play reward, I got the reward of minus 1. So, you are waiting by this and this is your standard, you think of, if you are saying this is your standard loss function, log likelihood loss of the soft box, right. So, the interpretation of this equation, I think you can see it in this one, yeah. So, this again comes to a standard. So, if I think about in a standard supervised learning setup, right, I can think of that I have a CNN and I am predicting 1 or 0, should I go up or down, right. I can actually give you a lot of examples. I give you this image, I say move the paddle up, I move the paddle down, up, down. So, that would be a standard supervised way of learning this network, yeah. But the thing what has happening here is that you really do not get supervision at that instance level. 
all that you get is you play the game to the end then you get a reward of either plus one or minus one now i need to figure out how do i have to propagate that reward back to every action i take because right what you are getting is you for example you figuring out there's a long run and then this yeah i think i'm out of time right okay let me just end with one slide so i have two more slides i'll just end it yeah so the reason why policy gradient is important is that maybe i think uh, we want to learn one method in deep reinforcement learning that would be the policy gradient right if you want to read up more and essentially it's actually much simpler to approximate the policy gradient and the choice of policy parameterization is a good way of injecting the prior knowledge there are very stronger convergence guarantees are available for policy gradient over action value methods so the next step from more advanced topics if you move next from here is the equation i showed you actually does not work that well in practice yeah the theory is the same but you have to control the variance of that you use something called as the baseline estimator to subtract to decrease the variance and that's what you'll find probably papers written on how do i control the variance of the gradient of the value function yeah? that's essentially all the literature is about to get better estimators of the gradient of that value function yeah? and then there's a next line called actor critic algorithms which use both the value function and the policy gradient which you'll not talk about i'll end up with two slides right so can reinforcement learning solve all kind of problems you know right and that's what i want to go and think about what are the other kinds of setup you think probably rl cannot solve right so this is a one game which is called as the montezuma revenge where it's known to fail very miserably here if you just summarize everything it's fine but uh, what is happening is that the key part of the game is that the agent has to figure out that there is some key here the key will unlock me to some hidden treasures and i open that i get some reward and humans we when we are playing the game it's very natural for us that key means something right so we really don't explore too much we just directly go to the key but in order to for a machine to figure out or an rl agent to figure out it has to run lots of trials till it figures out that hitting the key is the right thing and that's why this lot of you in this game i think it's very easy not i mean humans can do better than rl in this case yeah and i think i'll just end with this slides as a thought for you right you want to think about with all the hype and all is can ai be dangerous right with probably with supervised learning people think it's ridiculous to think of where does ai have any negative consequences but if you think about now with what i told you with rl right so rl can actually be programmed to do something beneficial but look at it in the end all that it cares is that i just want to achieve my goal yeah and you specified some reward you never specified with how do i achieve this goal right it really it can actually figure out that there is a very destructive way of achieving this goal all that cares is that i just want to maximize the reward i can say that my reward would be that goal is that drive to me the airport as fast as possible right you specify it that way that it could probably cause a lot of accidents even before it reaches there right because it really does not have any notion of what is an accident or not all it cares is this one track that i have to reach to the airport faster yeah and that's why all these concerns come on how do you actually is just specifying this whole rewards and goals is the right thing to do right how do you bring in other constraint how do you bring fairness how do you bring morality can the agent have a guilt etc right and that's essentially i will end the talk with yeah thanks guys thank you very much our next talk is a